Good morning, golfers. Welcome to the Ladies' Tea, your show for all golf talk. We are broadcasting live from the Beth Page Golf Shop. I'm your host, Megan Youngman, LPGA professional and director of instruction at Beth Page Black in Farmingdale, New York. Alongside me is Lorianne Cherulo, president of the Women's Metropolitan Golf Association. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Very well. Good. Thank you. Oh, boy, do we have a special guest Looking today. Looking forward to it. <laughs> Our special guest is Debbie O'Connell. Uh, she's joining us via the phone. Uh, but let me introduce Debbie to all of you. Debbie is a community change maker. She is the LPGA Northeast Section Teacher of the Year in 2016. She has won the Nancy Lopez Golf Achievement Award. She is an LPGA National Professional of the Year. She's the LPGA 50 Best Teachers. And she's Golf Digest 50 Best Women Teachers in America. We are so lucky. She's a leadership advocate. She also is the author of a best-selling book, Golf Positive, Live Positive, which offers insight and practical solutions to help one achieve their goals both on and off the golf course. Debbie, are you with us? I am, and I am so excited to be here with both of you. Hi, Lorianne. Hi, Megan, and all the listeners. Good morning. Well, good morning to you. We're so excited to have you on. This is uh, such a big week coming off International Women's Golf Day. Oh, it's just incredible to have so many women around the world get together and support each other and encourage each other and gather in a very comfortable environment, whether they already played golf or they just want to get to know what this game is all about and maybe dip their toe in. It was um, a great organization that was started in 2016, and it's in in like 57 countries around the world and almost a 1,000 events around around the world that encourage women and girls to get involved in the game of golf. You know, it's such a big day, especially being an LPGA member and being able to be brought in to be a part of their day. I mean, that's how I kind of saw it. It's it's their day. You know, it's my day as yep. a female as well. But it's their day to celebrate and to kind of, I guess, especially with social media now, we can we can see that other we, we can see other women playing golf Mm -hmm. you know and with all the posting and all the sharing about everybody's events on that big day you know to the ladies that 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 were with me that day which were probably let's see 60 probably 110 women over the over the course of the whole day um i noticed really that their excitement was that they knew that they were celebrating with other women what do you think debbie well and that's what it's about you know we we want to celebrate each other and celebrate the game itself for what it does for each of us and then um, celebrating ourselves and that's the thing too taking the time for yourself and a lot of women don't do that do they so i think it's a day where women can say all right this is day is about me the whole world is celebrating this i deserve to be a part of this and i think that's a lot of times what's missing because oftentimes you see women put everyone else first and then if they have time to get out in the course they will for themselves and you're seeing more and more people and women, you know, women making a priority for them. It's it's not let la- they're last on the list anymore. So that celebration in itself um, for each person individually, and then bringing that together, and and it's so comfortable, right? That I think that's the big part of it. When they know it's a women's event, and it will only be women, and and not that guys guys are that all that bad. They're wonderful. There's so many wonderful men who support this game and support women playing the game. But when, you know, someone's new in the game and, and they, they worry about what other people are going to think of them or embarrassing themselves, when they're around a group of women who are welcoming and that's what the day is about, the support, the encouragement, the community, the celebration, they're going to jump in and just be a part of the celebration. You know, that's so true. I, I think of it, too, that, you know, some of the gentlemen, you know, would see that we're celebrating this huge day. Mm-hmm. And they say, why don't we have a day? And I said, well, honestly, every day is your day. Yep. And frankly, be glad that you don't have to have a day mm-hmm. because we have to have this day. Yeah. You know, it's it's definitely something um, women's golf is just booming all over. I mean, I don't know about you, Debbie, but I have given... I mean, I have given so many lessons to new golfing women, groups of women, especially the groups, uh, even even those that that put their own groups together. But this this has been the last two years has just been a boom for women's golf. So I think that this day was even bigger than normal. 
Well, the golf industry in general over the last two years, because it was that one sport and the one activity you could get out and do during the COVID times. And we found golf courses getting so crowded, even though they had to limit for a while, the tee times were spread out longer. But oftentimes they were doing two, two people in a group only until things got better and better. Golf became that sport. There were people who jumped in just because they're like, I want to go do something. I need to get out of the house. I can go play golf. I'm going, even though they hadn't played the game. And, Lorianne, I'm sure you uh, as well saw lots of um, activity in your organization and more people getting involved with the events and maybe even joining. Yes, more people uh, joining. In fact, also our independent membership, uh, you know, people are joining because they want to be able to play more because they have been either reintroduced or they had it when they were a child and they just picked it back up again. And you're right, Deb, the, the amount of women playing has just exploded. And it's great, especially when you see things like the uh, the Open coming out and people watching the women. And Megan, as you had talked about, you know, watching other women and playing with it, we're very social. So the Women's Golf Day is a great way for women to get reintroduced or to have fun and to really put the values of, like you said, Deb, that community together. Yep, exactly. So, Debbie, let's move this conversation a little bit to tie in your golf positive. You know, this is uh, what you do every single day is un imaginable. I mean, you are the most positive person. I know that that you are celebrating every single day and it it probably took you, you know, a long time to get there. Super proud. Um proud to know you actually. Um but you know, this golf positive, you've been a leadership advocate for forever. <laughs> I think since you came out of the womb. Um but talk to me a little bit about your golf positive, live positive mindset. Oh, I'm thrilled to share with you because I did not come out of the womb that way. I came out of the <laughs> womb so incredibly shy. And I was one of those little kids who would hold on to her mother's leg whenever anybody was around. And, and I felt embarrassed often. I didn't have confidence. I remember failing in sports and feeling like I let my parents down and my team down feeling not good enough and adequate, sometimes feeling like and questioning, am I, am I afraid of success or am I afraid of failure? Like, I don't feel like I'm reaching my full potential. And I found it frustrating. Like, many golfers are frustrated or they're, they feel embarrassed. They feel judged. They're worrying about what other people think and, think. and then in their own game, they hit one poor shot, and all of a sudden they're questioning, I'm not good enough, I'm inadequate, I'm the worst person in this group. And all these negative thoughts come up, and I had those fears. I had a fear of not being good enough and, and feeling like I didn't even belong. Like in school, I was so quiet and shy and certainly was not one of those popular kids. And, and the thing I did to get out of being shy was I would ask myself this question. I'd say, well, what's the worst thing that could happen, Debbie? If you just said something or if you raised your hand or if you, if you went and had a conversation, what is the worst thing that would happen? And I'd say, will you die? That was my big question. And I would say, no, I won't die. And then... I'd say, well, then do it, then push yourself. So what I did was push myself out of my comfort zone, and then I became obsessed with our brains and the mindset and how it worked. Since I was in my late teens, you know, reading all the positive books, getting, you know, doing Tony Robbins programs, reading Norman Vincent Peale, Zig Ziglar, all of the leaders in mindset and positive thinking, and and up to John Maxwell now of of late with leadership, and Dean Graziosi is huge, and then reading like the Oprah Winfrey's and the Robin Roberts, and just staying involved. And what I found was that shift in mindset was so incredibly powerful, and I, I truly have become a master at changing my conscious mindset in an instant. You know, I can have that moment of a poor golf shot and being like, ugh, and then boom, I snap right out of it. I'm like, boom, and I change my state. You know, if there's, I have a a lot of people come to me, they're they're feeling inconsistent. I'm so inconsistent on the golf course. I have this great hole and then I blow it. And I usually say years ago that, uh, I I like to call it the muab, the mess up after birdie. (laughs) Some people use a different word. I love it. Um, (laughs) I love it. Well, hey, Debbie, on on muab, we're going to have to take a quick commercial break. I hate to cut you off, but we're going to, we're going to resume this right after our commercial break. This is great. Um, Cheers to Muab. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Spine Care Technologies is an amazingly innovative medical device company. Their flagship product, the Extend Track Elite, is world renowned among pain management centers, 
sports medicine experts, physical therapists, and chiropractors. Spine Care Technology is dedicated to improving sports performance by relieving acute chronic back pain and its disabling effects. The Extend Track Elite is FDA cleared, non surgical, drug free, and has been praised by health professionals around the world for its excellent clinical results in treating low back pain. Learn more at SpineCareTechnologies.com. The all new Hyperflex from FootJoy is tuned for golf with every detail designed and developed with a golfer in mind. Starting at the top, it looks awesome. The fresh material on the upper provides a great fit that forms to your foot and is fully waterproof. Next, the all-new Rapid Fit system ensures a dialed-in, precision fit, wrapping your foot in complete security. It offers incredible comfort with the new Stratofoam midsole, coupled with the OptiFlex outsole so that the shoe and the foot move in unison, whether walking or swinging. Available now in Laced and the new Rapid Fit system, shop now at footjoy.com. Hey, have you guys seen the new TaylorMade driver? Introducing the TaylorMade Sim 2. Built differently around a forged aluminum ring that shifts weight in new ways. They made it so long and forgiving, golfers can't wait for their next chance to tee off. Sim 2 gives every golfer the confidence to swing away every time they step up to the tee. Only from TaylorMade. Welcome back. We are here with Debbie O'Connell, Lori Ann Chirulo. Uh, Debbie was just talking about Muab. Let's just jump right back into that conversation, Debbie. <laughs> you bet. Well, that was that mess up after birdie. And so I, I have dug deeper because I found that the conscious mindset reframe was great. And that's the mental game of golf we learned, right? Take your breath, visualize your shot, right. positive thoughts, positive posture, all that that we all teach in the mental game of golf. And we've learned to teach that, and it's very powerful, and it works. I encourage everybody to do it. I have now taken the game, the mental game, the inner game to a deeper level, and I call it more mindset because what what my studies have taught me is that the unconscious mind beliefs are the key. No matter how much you reframe consciously, if inner beliefs of I'm not good enough, I'm inadequate, I'm not valued, I'm not loved, I have to prove myself – if those, I'm not an athlete, right? I'm too old, I'm too young. All of those, but so many of those, actually all of them, are really set and imprinted before the age of seven. So well, something emotional happens, a significant emotional event when we're a kid, and all of a sudden our unconscious mind hooks up a negative belief with that. For instance, I was in, um, I was in a softball game when I was very young, and it was one of those, we were in extra innings, and my mom was the coach, and she could choose either me going to pitch in the extra innings or my sister. And I had this childlike excitement of, Mama, pick me, pick me, like, you know, like a little kid. I want, can I do this? Because I, I was pretty confident on an athletic field. Everywhere else I was shy. But on the athletic field, I was like, Mom, can I go pitch it? And I was younger and shorter and not as strong as my sister. But my mom looked at me with all this excitement and said, yeah, go ahead, you pitch. Well, I get up there and I'm giving my best. I feel like I'm pitching great. The other girl hits a home run against me and we lose the game. And, you know, and it, it, my mom just loves me to death. And she's competitive and she wants the best. But when I walked off the field, her back was to me. She didn't see me. And she said, I knew I should have put Donna in. It was my sister. And that moment for me, you know, I felt like I really disappointed my mother. And unconsciously, I had this belief if I failed in, in a sport or I, I, I wasn't loved. And, and consciously, I would have never said, I, I feel so much love for my mother and support and my father. I feel like I had the greatest childhood in the world. But unconsciously, when I did this work, I found that I had to win. I needed to be the best. I needed to get recognition to feel loved unconsciously. So all of a sudden now when I'm in sports, I'm trying to prove myself and be enough, and that's so much extra pressure on an individual. So when I've gone in and released that belief, and now I go out, and now I have that childlike excitement again because after that moment, I had lost that. I, well, had, I, I had more fear. I can completely understand that. Yep. You know, I think that now 
if we think about our girls, you know, these girls that are playing golf now, the younger girls. I mean, look at the U.S. Open. We've got these young girls just Phenomenal. killing it. And, you know, I, I kind of want to connect with you a little bit, Debbie, about about their development and their self-esteem because we're seeing, like, Megagani. She is... She's got, I, I just saw an interview with her yesterday talking about she almost plays better because she's got the spotlight. Right. She loves it. And that's fueling her performance. Um, let me just give you a little quote. Um, but she did thank her previous U.S. Open experience for her mm-hmm. extra confidence this year. Um, but she said the first time at the U.S. Open is nerve wracking for anybody and meeting your idols and being on stage for the first time. Uh, but the second time around, even the practice round, I wasn't as nervous. I felt like I could come here and just play my game instead of soaking that all in. Definitely a little bit easier this time. Um, but these younger girls that we're seeing playing, they're playing well, and they're hitting the ball further than we've ever seen mm-hmm. them hit it. But talk to me a little bit, Debbie, about their self-esteem. Do you think that's changing? Well, if we take Mega, for example, and I hope there's parents listening. When she was growing up playing golf, and she started at age eight in girls' golf. Now, remember, girls' golf is about not only teaching young girls golf, but it's about having fun. It's about being welcoming. Everything we celebrate on Women's Golf Day is girls' golf, and it's, it's that fun that they're having. She said her parents' main focus for her was that she enjoy herself and that she have fun. It wasn't about her golf score, and her coach uh, even talks about that. She said, parents, pay attention to the conversation that you're having on the way home because I've coached some fine athletes who they only heard from their parents everything they did wrong that day. What happened on this shot? Or if it was basketball, why why did you miss so many shots? Or why did what happened on this play? And it was all the things they did wrong. And when that becomes the focus, then our confidence level just plummets. What, what Megan's family did was, and she was in my girls' girls golf program at age eight, and, and watch her develop, and it was always fun for her. She always had fun in the game. Well, you and, can see and, it in her face. And then uh, you know, developed her skill. Interviews. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. she's not worried about being judged or being, you know, losing or things like that, because when she walks off that golf course, she is so loved about it. She loves who she has and confidence in who she is, and she knows she has that love and support from others, no matter what. She's not her golf score. She's not exactly. her performance. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'll never forget my high school coach. My high school coach was not a golf professional, but she was a two handicap at Inverness Country Club, uh-huh. which is where we're holding the Solheim Cup yep. this year. So she's an excellent player, um, a wonderful woman. And I still talk to her occasionally, but she always told me because I was so hard on myself, you know, as a teenager, you got to learn uh, yep. where to get your fuel from. And she always would sit me down and look me directly in the eyes and say, you are not your golf score. Yep. And I think that that was one of the most important things that I ever heard. No, I, I agree. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of meeting Mega in regards to uh, she has done some work with the WMGA and represented at 14. She was representing the American at the American French Cup with the WMGA. You know, phenomenal. And like Deb says, they have this focus. They make it fun. And in the Griscom Cup that we talked about, the 117 um, year of it, you know, we played against our sister groups in Philadelphia and Massachusetts. And I have to report, we won. Yay. Um, but we had Woo. gals that were one from high school, um, Caitlin Lee, uh, two from or three of them from colleges in Harvard, Unikim, and um, Katie Lee, not to be confused, as well as Ame Gundani. And these gals were just absolutely phenomenal. Their focus, uh, they were out there to have fun. Um, and it wasn't just the score. And, it, you know, it was match play. It was alternate shot. And you worked as a team. And it really was a lot of fun. And we won was kind of like the secondary part of it from that perspective. But I, I do have to just say that uh, Emily Montiano, Alexis Hios, Noel Mertz, and uh, Leanne Lewis was rounding out the team. But they did phenomenal. And our whole point to them was do the best you can. And have a great time. Have a great time. Yep. And like Deb says, and Deb, I'm, I'm a student of Deb's, and I agree with her. I was my own worst enemy. And I would say things to myself that I would never even say to a friend, but I'm telling myself this. And so really to understand that unconsciousness really 
that thought process and to train it is how these girls perform. They did amazing, too. Yep. You know, the, they're so young. If I so can just young. add in, Megan, unfortunately, that's the exception. It is. Megan's the exception. exception. Yep. So what we find, actually, with teenage girls is their confidence does plummet. Exactly. And they, they drop out of sports. That's true. At, at, yep. in, when they hit their teenage years. So that's why the LPGA has developed the LPGA Leadership Academy, which brings in teenage girls. And we teach them empowerment and confidence, believing in themselves. And we teach them leadership through the game of golf. And uh, I'm so proud. I co-wrote that curriculum with Nancy Henderson. And it's a phenomenal program. We have four programs going on this summer. And, uh, and so that's the key is to help parents understand that what they say to their kids and how they respond is really important for them and building these girls up and get them involved and around people who are positive and encouraging and great leaders to help them keep their self-esteem up and believing in themselves because that is so key. I can't wait. Women. You know, I'm going to be a part of that uh, in October. Mm -hmm. I get to Woo, be, yay. be I'm there so with excited. you guys. I love and, this program. Oh, I can't wait. Hey, we're going to have to go to commercial break really quickly and we'll be right back. Okay. Joint stiffness or sciatica due to herniated disc or acute facet joint problems, you need to know about a spine therapy device called Extend Track Elite. Extend Track Elite incorporates multi axis spinal positioning, traction, and joint and soft tissue mobilization. Your doctor or therapist can use Extend Track Elite to move your body into pain relieving therapeutic positions that keep your body relaxed as your spine is mobilized. Learn more about Extend Track Elite at SpineCareTechnologies.com. Ever hit that one perfect iron shot and think, well, that's the one shot that will keep me coming back? Well, why does it have to be one shot? Why can't it be five, 10, or even 50 shots that keep you coming back? That was TaylorMade's inspiration when they designed the all new TaylorMade Sim 2 irons. Their unique cap back design is engineered for more forgiveness, more distance, more often. Feel what it's like to play with better irons with the all-new Sim 2s from TaylorMade. FootJoy sets the standard for golf shoe performance and style in 2021 with the all-new Premier Series, inspired by golf shoes of the past, but supercharged for today's game. Designed in collaboration with the world's best players like Justin Thomas, Adam Scott, and Max Homa, the Premier Series features classic styling with premium waterproof leathers and great details that exude craftsmanship. That is complemented by state-of-the-art comfort and performance features like the Versatrax Plus outsole. Learn more about the Premier Series at footjoy.com. Hey golfers! Most of you have heard about the championship golf course at Bethpage Black, but it surprises me how many people don't know that there are four other courses. Not everyone needs to be a scratch golfer to play at Bethpage. The other four courses are set up for beginners, women, juniors, and high handicappers alike. After golf, visit our 4,000 square foot pro shop where every item down to golf balls are logoed with the Bethpage Black logo. Visit BethpageGolfCourse.com for more info or to shop online. Well, we're back. This is uh, this is always a fun segment to end the show. Love it, um, Debbie. You're going to have some fun with this one. Um, the segment's called "Let's Hit It." Uh, it's where I hit common issues uh, that happen to all golfers. So, Debbie, you and I are going to take this on. Uh, the first the first topic is how do I continue to get better when I have old beliefs that are holding me back. Oh, that's right up my alley. <laughs> I tell you what, for today, if you if you have time today, join Keys to a Champion Mindset. Lori Ann went through the program. Great program. And no, you're doing that at 10 o'clock, right? Deep. Yeah, we start at 10 o'clock today. It's uh, it's the most powerful program I've ever put together. It's it's uh, five days, 90-minute webinars, and we have replays. For those of you who have tea times, don't worry. And here's the key that takes it to the next level, Megan. Everyone gets their own personal coach, like mindset coach during the process. And when you talk to your coach, they take all the information you learned during the webinar, and we were implementing things, but they take it deeper for you. And we find those limiting beliefs because you want to get to the core and the root cause of it so you can shift your mindset at the root cause. 
and uh, and then we have a whole other process where we can release it as well. But those limiting beliefs are are they're so powerful, and they jump in there even if you consciously reframe, consciously reframe. You know, it's that person that has an incredible front nine and they blow it on the back, or they're about to shoot their lowest score ever, or about to win the tournament and they self sabotage because they don't think they deserve it or don't think they're good enough. They think they're inadequate. Um, I've done it. I've done it in golf for for years. Well, there and, we go. Uh, so, it it, so, yeah, it leads there me you to go. my next question of I play in such fear of making a mistake that I can't ever truly play my best. Yeah, so what we dive into is when. what are the other thoughts and emotions that come up? And when was the first time you felt fear if you failed, if you didn't succeed? When was the first time that happened? And what were the thoughts and emotions that came up? And then we, then we really talk about what need, what did you need that wasn't met when you were a kid? You know, needed maybe support, the love, the encouragement. And then how can you create that in your life now? How, how, where do you get that love and support and encouragement now? And how can you realize that you have that no matter what your golf shot is so you can have that confidence stepping into the golf course and being fearless and courageous? Imagine being fearless and courageous on the golf course and having unwavering belief. Some of my clients who've been through Keys to a Champion Mindset, they're like, oh, my, I feel so differently out on the golf course. I just I hit my shot wherever it goes. It doesn't mean we're perfect golfers, but it means that when we – hit a shot we're not happy with we react in such a way that's okay we don't take it to heart like i'm a failure i'm not worthy i'm i'm inadequate and we start one gal she said i would say to myself all the time i suck and she then i did your program to use to a chance mindset now i'm not there i'm having more fun i used to focus on slow play and get so mad and frustrated now i focus on my friends that's why i play anyway because i want to be with my friends and i used to get frustrated with slow play i'm like now i realize all that and I've shifted my mindset. I have so much more fun. I'm courageous, and I just go out and I play, and now I'm playing the best golf of, of my life. Well, you know, self-belief, resiliency, self-worth, it all affects our confidence, and I don't really think that we think about it that way. Right. You know, I, I think that, um, what do I call them, sometimes an ego shot, yep. you know, where you, like a bunker shot. You have to go in there with an ego you have to create one before you even step into that or you're in a high rough shot you know but those are those are different golf shots but i think that when it comes to our overall game we're not thinking of uh what well, we're playing in fear right debbie right. we're seeing a lot of that and we're not really thinking about it and you you bring this to us is that you say okay let's look at the first time you had that fear yeah, and Deb does, in taking the program, Deb takes a good job with herself and her, her coaches to really get you down to that root matter. And, you know, you know the answer, but you don't really see it until her group helps you identify it and then, then work with you on how to unthink it and think the right thoughts. Well, Debbie, how can we get uh, a, a part of your program? Yeah, the, the best way is to go on, on my website. It's Debbie, D-E-B-B-I-E hyphen O'Connell, O-C-O-N-N-E-L-L dot com. So Debbie hyphen, that little dash, Debbie hyphen O'Connell dot com. And look under Golf Positive, and you'll see under um, in, under Courses, Keys to a Champion Mindset. Click on that. I, I have registration opened up through tomorrow because because of the replays. Someone could jump in and catch up, but get on there. If you can get on there live this morning, oh, my God, you will, you'll be so excited to be part of this. And if you want to have more confidence and belief in yourself and play more consistent golf, this is the program for you. And uh, I, I would love it if, uh, if your listeners, I would love to support them in their journey with golf because it is a sport. We play it for fun and recreation, and too many people beat themselves up during a round of golf. And don't enjoy it. And then, you know, those who are highly competitive, who want to play to their ability, are unconsciously sabotaging themselves. So I'd love to unleash people from that. So it's debbie-o'connell.com. Um, look under Golf Positive and Courses as Keys to a Champion Mindset. We start at 10 a.m. today. Like I said, every afternoon you get an email with awesome. a replay. And then you set your schedule calls with your coaches are based on your time you just your coach will reach out to you you schedule it on your time and we throw in at the end megan a 40-minute strategy well that's to pull it all together 
That's so great. Debbie, thank you so much for being on the show today. Uh, we'd like to thank our title sponsor, Spine Care Technologies, who's put all our shows on the radio. Uh, Debbie, Lorian, Terulo, thank, thank you so much. Uh, coming up next is Little Sticks with Justin Kauf and Dan Frankel. I'll be back with Kelly at 8.30 a.m. with Faults and Fixes. Make it a great day out on the links.